Hey guys, we are heading into the gumboot garden to check on our growing beets today. And I thought it would be a great time to go over with you how you can have your own beet harvest. Here in Auckland, New Zealand, we can pretty much grow our beets year round, but I prefer to grow them in winter time when I'm trying to fit less into my garden space. Beets are a funny plant to sow because each seed can grow into two to four plants. This is caused because there are clusters of flowers fused together into what's called a multi-germ seed. So when you're doing your sowing, you need to keep this in mind. I sow my beet seeds into six cell trays and put two seeds per cell. Now this could mean that I could end up with eight beet plants per cell, which is a lot. However, I find that I end up with three to five strong seedlings per cell, which is perfect for me because then I don't have to sow as many trays. Many people may say that you can't transplant your beet seedlings, but that's just not true. I have always transplanted my beet seedlings and have better germination rates. And I think that's just because <laughs> keeping these little guys separate from the rest of my main garden. It reminds me to water them as much as they need to and give them enough sunlight and just take better overall care. There is a catch though. You need to be very, very delicate with their tap roots. If their tap roots are damaged when you're transplanting, then you're not going to get one of those nice plump beets that you want. The easiest way to avoid damaging these tap roots is to just pop the cell out of your seedling tray and plant it directly into the soil as it is without disturbing any of the root. That just means they'll be growing in clusters, which they love growing with their family members. So as they develop, they will just kind of push apart from each other and you can harvest the larger ones as they grow and develop to give more room for their smaller friends. If you're looking to grow your beets a little bit larger though, another option is to Thin your seedlings out. Keep the strongest seedlings and snip the other guys. Then you can still remove that cell without disturbing the soil and you'll just be planting a one beet seedling per spot. I always feel a quite bad thinning them out and I like to take a little bit of a risk. So I actually take my three to five seedlings and separate them out, being a very delicate not to damage their tap roots. And I plant them into the ground individually. And that way I get to keep all of my seedlings. They are quite a delicate seedling, so you do need to decide which way of sowing is best for you. Either way you sow, just make sure you're planting them in a nice sunny spot about four to six inches or 10 to 15 centimeters apart. They're not heavy feeders, so if you plant them in some nice rich soil or compost, that will be enough nutrients for them to grow to their full potential. Keep their soil moist so their roots don't become woody, and in a few months, you will be ready to harvest. And if you are a bit impatient to begin harvesting from this crop, it's not just the roots that you can eat. Beet leaves are also highly nutritious. They are a great source of iron with an even higher iron count than spinach has. And they also are filled with vitamins A, C, K, B6, which help with so many different things. These vitamins help keep your eyes healthy, lower your blood pressure, help with bone and heart health, build your immune system, better brain function, oh, and the list keeps going on and on. There are so many good things about beet leaves, so make sure you're eating yours. My beets aren't quite ready for harvesting yet, so I'm going to take some leaves myself to eat for dinner tonight. I'm gonna keep cutting some more beet leaves, but if you did enjoy this growing video, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more. I will catch you in the next one, guys. See ya.